Hey, how's it going? This is Gazelleg for grinderschool.com and today we're going to continue the series of uh, moving ourselves around the table. Uh, so these are the filters that I've gone for today. So voluntary put money into the pot, so definitely hands that we play. Um, we are on the button so that in Poker Tracker we put that as zero. Um, it's, uh, it's much more straightforward in Holder Manager where you can just select position and then button. Um, I put there re-raise opportunity, 3-bet, um, you know, we just want there to be an opportunity to 3-bet, not that we necessarily take the uh, take that opportunity to 3-bet, so we're facing facing a raise, and then I also put there that we, you know, we didn't face an all-in pre-flop, because uh, I don't really want to do um, sort of 15 big blind and under spots today, I want to, to look at, you know, a little bit more deeper stack situations. Um, there might be some three bet shoves in there, but we shall uh, we shall see. So let's um, let's close this off and bring in the hands. Uh, so here is our first hand with Jack. So we have 19 bigs on the button. I think this is going to be a fairly straightforward play. Uh, so this guy opens. He has um, 35 big blinds. He opens for a min raise. Um, I think the only play here is just to go ahead and shove. Probably worth thinking about other hands that you want to shove in this situation. I think ace queen, uh, ace king, obviously. Uh, probably all the way down to pocket nines plus. I mean, he is raising from relatively early position. There is a uh, guy not here. So, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, nine handed table with a guy sitting out. So, it's essentially he's raising from middle position one. Uh, so, I think we can shove nines. We probably shove eights as well. And we probably shove ace jack suited. Um, so yeah, I mean, Jax is just a very, very comfortable shove, and we get called and we lose the flip. Again, I mean, the results don't really matter. Uh, okay, so here we are pretty sure, and I said we didn't want to look at under 15 big blind spots, uh, but I guess, you know, here we are with five bigs, a very strong hand versus the, the cutoff open. I mean, he has 14, 15 big blinds, he's opening for a 3x, which isn't great. Um, but given the stack sizes behind, he's obviously committing himself to me and committing himself to the small blind. And he wants to fold out the big blind, probably. Um, so I feel pretty confident in getting this in. We do. And he has five, six of club, uh, which is, I think, a pretty bad open. Like, if he, this is just not a good hand to, to be committed against two players. Um, when you open this hand, you are doing it as a steal, for, so you have fold equity. Um, and then you want to have a little bit of playability, and with his stack size, he wants to go with high cards rather than rather than this, because you know the big blind can definitely flat, and then he gets this board, and he has six high, and he has to bluff, and it's not a good situation. So uh, I don't think his play was very good. Here we are with King Jack, and we see a raise from a guy with about seventy big blinds, and we have about just under fifty big blinds. Uh, so there are two options in this spot. I think it's a pretty pretty nice situation to have, to have come up through these filters uh, that we can either choose to flat call or we can three bet. Um, I like three betting more. I think just to apply pressure to what is a hijack range, so it should be fairly wide. I mean, it's definitely going to be wider than early position. The only downside is that we're on the button and people like three betting from the button, so we might start to face some uh, resistance but I think I prefer a 3-bet but flooding is absolutely fine and that's what I choose to do here and he checks now a lot of the time players are going to check here because they're choosing to give up um, obviously we don't have any timing tells at this stage in game we might do maybe if he snap checks or he thinks for a while and then checks you know you might have a better idea of whether you think he's going to be giving up or not uh, here we have two over cards um, we don't have any back doors? Uh, mm, we have a back door straight draw, I guess. If it goes nine ten, um, but it's pretty pretty slim. So our equity against his his continuing range isn't actually that high. Um, so I feel like I probably just want to check and and see what happens. Uh, we do check, and now we pick up some equity. So I think now um, we probably want to apply some pressure. Um, he probably has a hand like. Ace King, Ace Queen, Ace Jack, King Queen, um, so, and those hands will probably call one bet, but then not call the second second barrel. 
Um, so yeah, I think we should bet here, and he does fold. Okay, so there's the next spot then. Let's just take the hold off. This guy opens um, 60 bigs, and we have about 45 bigs. Um, I think. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, I think calling's fine. I think three betting's fine. I think folding's fine as well. Um, I think if there's some weaker players in the blinds, it makes it um, more of a call. Um, but I think if I'm happy to call like king 10, king 9 suited, then king 8 suited becomes the perfect three bet. So that's what I choose to do. And he folds. So just to kind of um, reiterate that point, if you think about what your calling range is in this spot, and then we just go a little bit lower than that to find some suitable bluffs and a suited king, you know, can still flop fairly well. We can uh, we can use that as, as a bluff. <clears throat> and I thought, you know, we got through the first few hands without the HUD keeping uh, popping up, but unfortunately not to be. Uh, this guy opens and we have Jack-10 suited here. Um, did we call? Yeah, okay. I, I don't like calling here. We have under 20 bigs. We don't really want to just speculate now. Uh, we're putting in a large chunk of our stack with a speculative hand. Um, I actually think that shoving is going to be far better than calling, and then um, you know, fold, we could just fold as well. So I think I'm going to run this spot into uh, hold and resources calculator. We can see how wide we uh, this guy has to be opening for us this to be a shove, uh, and then we can. Um, I mean, we've already worked out that this. I just don't think it's a, a profitable call. I mean, these two players can shove, and then what do we do? You know, we've given away 343 chips, which is, you know, a fair amount of our stack. So I'm going to load this into HRC, and we can investigate it a little bit more. Okay, so what I've done here is I clicked on Advanced Hand, so we get this Advanced Hand setup. And then I'm going to paste the hand in here, and then I'm going to click Next, and we can put in here 343. I believe that's how much you made it. Yeah, 343. Now you can also just put like two point whatever big, big blinds in here as well, uh, or you can do the exact amount. So we, we've got open and shove, and then um, one, two, three, four folds. So I'm hoping this is going to work um, because we we've got the player names on here at the moment. Um, so we'll just uh, we'll just see see what happens. Hopefully this is going to be the hijack that opens as a hijack button cut, uh, hijack cutoff button small blind that works. Okay. Um, so he if he opens what he should be opening, then we can see the jack ten suited is a shove. Now when I say what he should be opening. That's what he should be opening if nobody ever flats. If the game is only ever played pre-flop and we, you know, just get chips in or we fold. Now we know that poker doesn't really work like that. Um, so we can model it uh, for times when people are flat and that's absolutely fine. Um, but for this one, because we're looking to shove, we can actually, you know, remove the 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 um, part of the scenario where we, where we end up uh, flatting or anybody else flats. So let's say that he's opening, let's say 20% instead. Um, and I'm going to go with something like this to begin with. Um, and we're going to see how Jack-10 suited uh, is playing against that range. And if Jack-10 suited isn't a shove, then what sort of hands can we shove in this situation? And it's always good to err on the side of caution, uh, so to sort of go with the tighter range to begin with. So you can see Jack-10 suited is a profitable shove in this spot, and we can also shove pocket fives. Pocket four is just slightly negative, um, but you can see it's included here. Um, we include it as part of, a, I guess, a GTO strategy, but it's a mix uh, between shoving and folding. Um, so yeah, I mean, we can shove ace-jack off, we can shove king-10 suited, queen-10 suited, jack-10 suited, pocket fives, ace-8 suited, um, and king-queen off as well. You can see that king-queen off and ace-8 suited not particularly profitable, um, but all the others are very, very profitable. So now we go, okay, well, I'm not sure this guy is opening this wide. Um, you know, let's let's start to, to remove some of the hands that possibly he chooses to fold. 
Uh, so maybe we go down to 16%. And we see the range of hands that we can shove this up. So before it was 11.8%. And now we're down to 9.9%. And you can see the Jack 10 suited is still pretty comfortable, pretty, pretty easy to go ahead and shove. And then if we do shove, he needs to call off. Um, with this range, so like sevens plus ace jack suited, king queen suited. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, I think we can see um, that jack ten suited. Okay, so it's included in like you're only supposed to shove it twenty four percent of the time, but I mean that's against a very tight range, and we've already seen that it goes slightly looser than this, and jack ten suited is is very very profitable. So yeah, I think we should have shoved here rather than call. So I think that's a mistake. And then yeah, we now see. Okay, so he checks the flop, and then he decides to fire here. So he could definitely have a jack, that ace jack, king jack, taking this line. He could just have an overpair because we flatted off this stack size. Um, obviously, can't fold at this stage. Um, I think we can probably fold now, but we are going to have aces and kings to flat in this spot. So it's not like we are folding too much. Um, we might check back some Queen X as well, that's going to be better calls than Jack-10. Um, well, I think we might even have Queens and Jack sometimes. I mean, I, this is the this is the tricky thing that off this stack size, you know, main, mainly we should probably just have Aces and Kings. And I think we can comfortably call this River Bet with those hands, obviously with Aces, um, with Kings as well. Um, but, you know, here we, we just have to, just have to give it up. Okay, now we have jacks. See a raise from the cutoff. We're definitely going to go ahead and three bet here, and we take it down. In the pocket kings, we see a raise. We're going to three bet. Um, I guess we could flat, but we're very deep, and I want to get value from this hand. So I decide to three bet, and also you know we want to start start creating that dynamic between cutoff and button. So he calls, and we get a pretty pretty nice flop for for our hand. Um, so we can definitely get all the chips in by the river here, and we don't need to bet that big. I think giving him an opportunity to, to spew here is pretty good. If we bet 10% of his stack, so like 26, 2700, uh, sorry, 260 or 270 chips, then we can get all in by the river. Um, and also that sizing will allow him to shove over the top sometimes as well. So I think this is actually too, too big, betting 4 12. Um, we see a club on the turn. I mean, if we bet here and he shoves, we're definitely not folding. Um, but I think we can check back as well because we can improve to a flush. And we can also call a bet on the river should he choose to um, put money in. So I think checking here is fine. Um, yes, betting is fine as well. But when he does shove, you know, he's looking at sets and flushes already. And we don't have great equity against those hands, but at this point we wouldn't be able to, to fold. So that's a wow, we did fold. <laughs> um, hmm. I was not expecting to see a fold in this spot. Um, I mean, it just I guess it just depends what you think he's doing with like ace, random ace of clubs, and then like. Ace, like ace jack with the ace of clubs, ace queen with the ace of clubs, ace king with the ace of clubs. Um, although we, we do reduce the number of combos because we have two kings. Uh, I just don't think we can fold here. And I think maybe a better spot would be to check turn and then bet river. Um, but yeah, I don't think we should fold here. We see a raise and a call. And we clearly just call here. Um, I'm not sure how profitable this is long term. Like I'd, I'd sooner have a bigger pair, like sixes or sevens. I think that's just gonna have a little bit more value and, and a little bit more strength on more flops. Whereas threes is just generally gonna be a fold unless we hit a set. Like there's maybe gonna be some spots where it, where it comes like two, four, five, and we can continue. Um, but most of the time we're just gonna end up folding. So I'd sooner have a bigger pair. Yeah, uh, we hit set, which is nice. And uh, we see a check. And then this guy bets. Um, this looks fairly strong with with the original race there and with us here. So I think we can I think we can go both ways. Uh he's 
the only thing reason it's not that strong is because he's bet a third pot or less yeah slightly less than a third pot um but i don't really want to allow him to to draw to the turn i mean there are some spots here when you should probably just call um but it's quite a few bad turn cards any spade any eight nine six jack you know, and then if, when we call here, we allow this guy in as well. So I think raising here is probably best. Uh, we do raise, he then shoves, and we call, and it's set of a set. Here we see a, a, another raise, and we have a pocket pair, and we're really, uh, really, really deep. So, you know, if this guy is particularly weak and we can stack him, then great. Otherwise, we should probably just fold pre. Um, so when it goes check, check, on the flop and he checks this turn as well he could definitely have a hand that beats us at this stage i think i'm going to check the turn and if he checks again i'm probably going to over bet the river because this is probably one of the worst hands we get to the river with like generally we're going to have high cards so we're going to have straights we're going to have two pairs we're going to have hands basically better than fours but check okay and then he bets and then we just have to fold Okay, next one then. Uh, we have pocket sixes, and I think this is probably a better hand to call with. Um, we're in late position. The only concern here for me, uh, there's actually quite a few concerns. The small blind has 15 bigs so that can shove on us, and you know we might be priced in to call. And do you really want to call off half of our stack with pocket sixes? Um, we're definitely priced in for the big blind, and also we actually don't have the right odds to call against uh, but in 68 so I think this is probably just a fold we do call and see if we can get it to showdown I mean then the ace comes and we have to fold um so yeah I mean I just don't think that's a good call pre-flop and that kind of led to some you know, difficulties post-flop um okay so I think we can flat here and I think we can three bet so here we choose a flat and now we just have to give it up on this board if it's king, I'm uh, definitely going to squeeze, so we do, and it's about calls, and he checks. So we could think at this stage, right, what really strong hands does he have? He could have jacks, he could have eights, he could possibly have threes. Jacks and eights make sense in this in this situation. Um, we do have ace-king, so we do block ace-jack and king-jack, um, but not significantly. Like it's more significant if we have aces and we then block ace jack. Uh, but then we wouldn't really too, be too worried about have him having a jack anyway because we have an overpair. Um, so if he has jacks and eights, I mean, obviously, for him to have jacks and eights, there are now fewer combos that he can possibly have because there's a jack on the board and there's an eight on the board. So there's actually more combos of like tens, nines, sevens, sixes, fives, stuff like that. He's also going to have hands that is completely whiffed here. Um, so I think we can start with the bet and we can see what happens. So he does call. So I think we can start to narrow down his range. Could be jack eights, could be pocket nines, pocket tens, could be a hand like ace eight, could be eight seven, um, to say ten nine, could be queen ten, queen nine, stuff like that. Um, so he checks and then we got to think, okay, so what, what's our target? What are we trying to get to fold in this, uh, in this situation? Uh, we can get nines and tens possibly to fold, although they do pick up a gut shot here. I think if we could bet fairly big here, um, you know, close to pot, then he's probably going to have to fold those hands. Um, he's not going to he's not going to fold a jack here. I don't think um, he could fold an eight. So any of the like nine eight eight seven that sort of thing. Even though nine eight does pick up some equity um, with a gut shot as well as a pair, um, I think we can you know apply a substantial amount of pressure here. Um, Queen jack obviously improves, but I don't think he's going to be folding a jack anyway. Um, so, but I do think this is a good spot to, to go ahead and bet. Um, we do, you know, we do get some hands to fold. And then if he continues here, there are obviously some Jack X and 8X of Diamonds hands that he could have. Although we do have the King of Diamonds, so that cuts down on like, he can't have the King Jack of Diamonds. Um, and he, yeah, he, there, you know, there aren't too many flush draws that he could have by the river. Um, so we check. And he fires on on this river about just under half pot. Um, so nine ten gets there on the turn. If he had an eight, obviously that's improved significantly. I think we probably just have to fold here. Um, let's just go back and just think about 
you know, do we actually have some hands to call the river? Um, I think we have some jack x. Uh, I think we might even have some ax if we three bet like nine eight suited eight seven suited ourselves. Um, we might have some queen x that we chose to check back. So, um, you know, I think we have enough hands to to call here. But I mean, ace king is kind of towards the top of our range in this spot, and I think that if you know, in theory, we're supposed to call with ace king to prevent him from being able to bluff like 100 percent of the time um you know this is towards the top of our range in this situation but um i just don't think that he's going to be bluffing that much um you know obvious hands that he called like queen 10 queen 9 improved to a pair uh 9 10 gets there on the on the turn uh, queen jack is obviously two pair you can have possibly ace queen that you can value bet um, so it's not like um, too many bluffs that he could actually have. So move on to the next one. Raise a call, and here is an eight-seven suited. Um, I imagine that I just used a flat. Okay, especially now it's like we couldn't guarantee it's going to go four ways. And we see a really small bet here. So the question is, do we just call or do we raise? Um, so think about the hands that we would raise here. We possibly have twos and threes, and then jacks. Um, and then we, you know, any like ace king, ace queen, ace ten of clubs is going to be pretty strong. Um, so we probably want to go ahead and raise those hands. Um, you know, ace queen of clubs against like king jack is doing pretty well. Um, so we can be happy to to raise there, and we might get him to fold some hands that have some okay equity against us. Um, Given that we've got eight an eight high flush, I think calling here is absolutely fine. Looking at the direct odds, um, there are nine clubs that help us. We and they're gonna that's gonna um, we're gonna hit a flush basically on the turn, uh, eighteen percent of the time, and the odds that we're getting is eighteen percent. So I think we can definitely call here, and I think raising is acceptable as well. Although we might just want to raise with hands that have a few more outs. Um, and really push that equity now. So like ace queen of clubs or five four or ace four or ace five of clubs. So it has the gut shot and the overcard and um the flush draw. So we call we hit the flush on the turn and he checks. Now he's got to try and think about how we can get the rest of our chips in. Um so there's we have sixty six hundred and there's three thousand in the middle. So if we take 3,000 from our stack size, we're left with 3,600. We divide that by 3, that equals 1,200. So we can bet 1,200 on the turn, and then we can jam for pot on the river. I think it's slightly better to go sl go bigger than 1,200. So if we go 1,500 here, um, there's going to be 6K in the middle, and he's going to have, uh, sorry, we're going to have 5,100 behind. So there's a little bit more likely we're going to get called on the River and if he does have a pair and a flush draw at this point, like kings with the king of clubs or ace jack with the ace of clubs, we want to charge at him at this stage. So um, I think betting like half or maybe a little bit more here is probably better. So we do bet half. He calls. He checks. Uh, I mean the board does pair. It's not great, uh, but I think we should just go ahead and rip in here, and he calls. And he just has a pair of jacks, so it's a nice, uh, nice situation. Okay, this next part then, we see a 3x here. Um, I mean, if jack 9 suited, we obviously have lost some chips at the start of this um, tournament. I think it's just fold, actually. I think we can call. It's costing us more than 10% of our stack, and I, yeah, we only win like. 900 chips when we actually hit so I don't like this um, and then we get this rate the squeeze and then a call We're getting fairly decent odds. I mean, let's just go here. Wow. So we're getting 1.9 to 1 or 34 percent on the call and when it comes back round to us We're getting 3.6 to 1 22 percent on a call, uh, but then we're committing even more chips So I think this is just fold pre I think that was pretty poor Okay, so you see a 3x and a call definitely gonna go ahead and squeeze this guy calls and this guy folds. So his this guy's range can include um, decent pairs. Um, I think he's probably going to four bet aces and kings, but you never know. Um, but he could have like 
jacks, tens, nines, eights, sevens, sixes. He could have ace queen suited, ace jack suited, king queen suited, queen jack suited, jack ten suited, and then maybe a little bit wider than that. So he checks. Now he's obviously not going to fold an overpair on this board. Um, and we don't have many chips left behind. So I think checking here is absolutely fine. See if we can hit a club and improve. Uh, but also betting here, and then you know if the club comes on the turn, then we can just rip the turn. That would be absolutely fine. Uh, we can get him to fold like queen jacks and jack tens and stuff like that. Um, we can apply pressure to sixes, sevens, and eights, especially by betting flop and then jamming turn. So I think betting the flop it would be absolutely fine. And um, we hit the king on the turn, and he leads for one ninth pot. Um, so. I think raising here or calling is absolutely fine. We decide to raise and he just folds. We have another jack nine suited with lots more chips behind. I think this is a much better call in this situation. And we flop middle pair with a backdoor flush draw and a backdoor straight draw. So it's going to call. He fires again. Um, a little bit scary, but he can definitely be doing this with some clubs, with some straight draws. Um, just with two overs, so we call again, um, and the queen might just slow him down actually. But he fires again, and I'm thinking at this stage, do we have many better hands? Like we have tens and jacks, we have king queen, ace queen, queen jack. We obviously have pocket nines, pocket five sometimes. So probably quite a few hands. I mean, we might, might have ace nine suited here. Ace nine is obviously going to be better than jack nine. Um, but I mean, if we're bluff catching, then it's pretty much the same kind of hand, uh, except that we block or don't block part of his bluffing range. Now, we do have a jack in our hand, which blocks like his jack 10 suited. So you can't have jack 10 of spades. Um, but we don't block any clubs. So I do think this is a, you know, a pretty tough spot. I just don't think that people are going to three barrel here, um, especially when we could easily have a queen or a boat. Um, so I think we can fold here. Um, but if you know against a very competent player, we probably have to call there. We see a raise, and I think three betting here is good, or we can just flat. So we choose to flat this time, and we have two over cards, a backdoor flush draw, and a gut shot. So we're not going anywhere. And then it goes check check on the turn. So given that we have the ace of hearts, it's very tough for our opponents to have. Well, it's impossible for them to have the ace of hearts. Um, so we reduce the number of combinations of hearts that they can they can possibly have. The small blind shouldn't be defending um, or calling here in a small blind with like low suited connectors. So he could, you know, he could definitely have king x, queen x, jack x of um, of hearts like jack ten, king ten, queen ten, queen jack stuff like that. Um, the king's obviously pretty good for him, but it also means he's not going to fold on the turn. Right, but when we see a check from villain 103, he could definitely have a king here. Uh, but he could also just have some some give ups. Um, I think that if we bet the turn, we're probably just going to have to rip the river as well. Uh, so I don't know what I chose to do. I did decide to bet the turn, and they both fold. Okay, we have the aces. Um, we're definitely going to have a head and squeeze, which we do, and only the brief up caller calls. So looking at this, the stack to pot ratio now is about two and a half. And we will just not be folding on many flops. Um, this looks fairly reasonable. So we just want to give an opportunity to put money in bad. And again, we could make a bet of 750 here and know that we can get in by the river. Uh, but I think he's going to have some king queens and queen jacks and uh, queen tens, ace, possibly ace queen. I mean, no, we have two aces. You know, he's going to have some spades. Um, yeah, and king x and jack x, like we said. So. I think this looks absolutely reasonable, and he folds. We have ace king now. Definitely going to go ahead and squeeze. Um, so we're just going to jam here. This guy has like 20 bigs. This guy is somehow flat in with eight bigs. Maybe a little bit scary, but you know, what what are you going to do? You're not going to fold ace king. So we shove. Uh, he calls and he calls and okay, fair enough. <laughs> Uh, so this, yeah, we shouldn't have been scared of this guy, and this guy getting it in as well seems pretty bad. He needs 36% equity against our range. Um, he's going to be behind a 
ton of the time. It's ace king, ace queen, ace jack suited, and then he's going to be flip like well, he's going to have a thirty percent equity against pairs. So it doesn't seem very good. And then this guy's overcall is just well whatever. Pocket jacks then. Um, very interesting spot. I think if we squeeze here, the pot's going to be really big, and then if this guy jams, we're going to be getting great odds, but it's a pretty rubbish spot. Like he can have ace-king, but he can also have aces, kings, and queens. Um, I don't think that should always factor into your decision-making. Like We shouldn't... Oh, okay, we shouldn't three-bet, because if, if he four-bets, then we are in a really tough spot. And we should three-bet, because we feel like we're going to get value from one of these players. They're just going to flat, and we get to play the hand in position. So I think uh, raising here is is, is good, um, but I think you can flat as well. And it goes bet, call. I think we should just fold. Um, I think if this guy bet and everyone else folded, then we'd have to call. Um, but we almost have like a collective responsibility on this flop to protect versus this bet. Um, so it's like almost pot size. So between the three of us, we need to defend like 67% of the time. And like, this guy's already defended, so we don't need to call that wide. And we should probably just continue here with hands that can have a little bit more equity. Um, so a hand like Queen Jack of Clubs, whilst like Jax has a lot of equity, a lot more equity, Queen Jack of Clubs can improve significantly. Um, or like 7-5, for example, or 7-8. Um, Seven eight of clubs, for example, has a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw. Um, I think that's probably going to be a slightly better call in this spot than pocket jacks. Queen nine, then we decide to limp. And I can't remember this hand. This guy raises, and we just fold. I think that's okay. I think we probably get away with. Um, calling the raise though in position, although this guy is very short. This looks like a final table situation, um, so I'm going to guess that you know we just didn't want to really get into a spot. Um, yeah, I mean we're not getting great odds. It's still coming to 30k to call, but we are in position. Uh, but if we call 30k and this guy shoves, then it's just rubbish. So there's something to think about. Uh, this guy raises. We have pocket tens, and I just decided to call. Again, this is a final table. I think it's the same same tournament. Um, so before it was three hand handed with three left, then and then hit, now we got it with four handed. Um, I don't really want to bust before these two, but tens is really really strong hand. What I don't want to do here is three bet, then he jams and have to call it off with tens. So my only play here, well, it's two plays. We can either shove or we can just call. So I just chose to call, and we get a pretty nice flop. So we should bet here, and we get jammed on. I mean, at this stage. With top set, I think we just have to go with it. Um, like we didn't pre-flop want to get into a flip, but now that we have top set, I think we can get it in and be comfortable. And really nice turn card for us, and uh, we double up. Okay, this next one then, um, we have 10-9 suited. We see a raise, and again, I think we can call or we can three bet. This time we choose, uh, choose to call, he bets, and we have to fold. Uh, then ace eight suited, we see a raise here, and this guy has like 20 big, so I think this is just a fold. Um, I think we make a mistake by calling. He bets, we have two overs in a gut shot, so we have to call. And then he fires again on the turn, and we end up folding, and I just don't think this is very good. We should just fold pre-flop. We have aces. Definitely going to go ahead and squeeze here. So we do. And we get a call. And he checks. And now we just want to bet an amount so that he just decides to get it in with worse hands. So a bet fairly small. And he jams. And perfect situation for us. Like if he's got his beat, then well played. But, you know, this is a great this is a great example of why we bet small on this board after three betting. Because he really feels like he has the best hand, that's why he jammed and we just snap him off and so great situation. 7-3 suited here, do I 3 bet? Well, I don't know why I'm calling here. We're 50 big blinds deep, um, I mean, it's not costing a great deal, I just don't think it's, uh, don't think it's very good, but this might have been a misclick and we end up calling and then I guess we have to bluff at some point. We actually hit the seven, but it's probably one of the worst hands we get to this river with. 
So we probably should turn our hand into a bluff. And we check, and he is King Jack. Yeah, I just don't understand this hand why we played it like this. And now we have ace queen. We're just going to go ahead and shove with six picks. Not too much to talk about there. And we win. And now we have aces. We see a raise. We're definitely going to go ahead and three bet, which we do. And he calls. Now we do have the ace of clubs here, so we're not too worried about a club coming off on the turn, so we could potentially check here, um, but I think betting's good as well. He calls. So when he calls, he has maybe some sets, like jacks, fives, and sixes. He has some straight draws, like eight, seven, that's just improved to um, a pair and a draw. He might have seven, four suited, or it's unlikely. I mean, yeah, very unlikely. Um, just because I don't think he's going to be raising that pre, and I definitely don't think he's going to be uh, calling it versus a three bet. Um, he could have, you know, some ace x and king x of diamonds hands, and then obviously flush draws as well. Now we do have the ace of clubs, so that reduces the number of flush draws that he can he can have. Um, I mean, ideally in this situation, we want him to have like king jack or queen jack. And so if we think about that's the kind of hand he has, then we bet an amount such that we're going to get value on the turn from that hand and then value on the river. So I think betting half pot and then jamming river seems fine. And we bet even smaller than that, um, which is fine. And there's now 4,000 in the middle. We've got 3,000 behind. If he jams this river, like that's pretty gross because I think sets would play that way and I think queen jack would play that way as well. Um, but now we just have to jam, and then he folds. So, I mean, yeah, maybe we should go bigger on the turn and get more calls from the draws. Like, it's starting to get very, very wet, and given that he could easily have, like, an 8-7 or a 9-8 um, type hand, we should probably go bigger. I think it's just we get value from a lot of hands here that end up folding the river, so we should probably just, just go ahead and bet bigger on the turn. Um, and also... By the time we get to the river, there's it's then costing him less to call into a bigger pot. So he might uh, talk himself into calling a little bit lighter. So that's going to wrap things up for this video. Uh, this was all about um, flatting or three betting from the button. Um, so facing a raise before us and then uh, deciding whether we should flat or three bet. I think generally I said, oh, we can three bet here or we can flat here. I think it's pretty close. Um, I think I'd sooner are on the side of three betting just to put players in more tricky spots. Um, although having said that, you know they're going to play more comfortably in a single raised pot, whereas in a three bet pot they might just end up folding too much, which isn't bad when you've got a bluff, but when you've got a value hand, you, you know you might struggle um, to get value from it if they're just going to be folding all the time. Um, but then I guess you know if that's happening, then we're not we're not bluffing enough, so we should probably start to three bet even more and um, put our opponents in more and more spots and then we actually get value because they just in the end they have to um, put up some sort of resistance and we just happen to have a hand um, so if you want to get in touch you can leave a comment in the forum you can email me gazellegpoker at gmail.com or you can follow me on twitter at gazellegpoker um, that's going to wrap things up for this video uh, this has been gazelleg for grinderschool.com signing off take care guys catch you next time Bye bye